pastors come and go, they live, they die, all the rest of it, and, um, and the point of this is not about me, it's not about a vision that I have, um, it's a vision that we believe as uh, an eldership, God has been speaking to us slowly and it takes time to understand what you're hearing, um, and it t- takes time to appreciate it, even to be very honest with you, it takes time to honour um, stuff when God speaks sometimes. I'd like to say to you that every time God speaks to me, I immediately put that word on a pedestal and honour it perfectly, but a lot of times I don't understand and, and, and wrestle with it. And so I just um, really want to say to you that um, this is a, a vision that God has for our church. Um, the process for you guys is going to be trusting whether um, I am speaking out the vision that God has given to us or or not, and so I appreciate it's going to take you a bit of time as well, it's taken me some time, and um, I just really want for you to open your heart up, at least this morning, um, to the fact that this can be God speaking to us about what he wants to do with our church, is that alright? So you take it home, pray about it, discuss it and all the rest of it, um, I'm not asking you to blindly, um, you know, receive everything you hear, but I do believe I'm speaking what God has revealed to us. And I do want to honour that, and um, I want you to have confidence today. Is that okay? Yeah. You're feeling confident. Is anyone not feeling confident? You're all right. All right, that's good. We um, really feel as as people who, um, you know, are God's people that ultimately, what are we doing here um, on the earth? Boils down to this simple statement, and that is to understand God's heart and to respond to it. Is that fair enough? If you had to sum Jesus' life up in just a a little terse sentence, what what was he doing? Um, I I personally, my personal conviction is that Jesus understood the heart of God and responded to it. And so whatever he felt God was showing him, he he was obedient to and responded to. And for us as a group of people, we don't want to be church goers, um, although church is part of God's great plan. we don't want to be road scholars or whatever, although that might be part of the plan for you. But what the plan is for God is that you will know his heart. Is that all right, church? To know God's heart and to be able to respond to it. And uh, so we feel as a church, this is God's heart for us. We want to respond to it. In the Old Testament, I feel to sort of, I'm always trying to funnel things down. The Bible's a big book, uh, but I'm always trying to sort of funnel things down. In the Old Testament, I see that God was writing wrongs. You know, Adam and Eve uh, had a foul up and things went badly wrong. Um, and God was writing those wrongs. Um, I guess if I could summarise it, like setting things straight, you might say, in Aussie vernacular. But it was also pointing to something better. In the Old Testament, God was constantly intervening, writing wrongs, keeping Israel on track as best as it was they were able to, um, and pointing towards something better. When Jesus arrived, and that was the better thing, that they were being pointed to. Amen? Stephen's excited. That's good. I've got one follower here. When, uh, when uh, Jesus arrived, that was the good thing that was, uh, you know, we were being pointed towards and uh, that better solution. And um, But it wasn't just for Jesus to fix things and bring salvation. When you look at Jesus' life, if you want to funnel that down and try and understand all the stuff we see in the Gospels and in the book of Acts and everything else, I I believe you want to funnel it all down. Jesus was just healing broken situations, healing broken lives, healing a broken relationship we had with God, healing broken bodies, um, healing broken families, healing people who have been cast out. And that healing wasn't just for Israel. You know, it started there, but Jesus, you know, ended up dealing with people that people couldn't understand. The lepers. They couldn't understand that. The prostitutes, they couldn't understand that. And even then, Jesus' need and desire to heal couldn't be contained. He started healing Samaritan people and Syrophoenician people, and they couldn't understand that. But even Jesus was pointing towards something as well. And so his life, if you want to funnel it down, was about healing broken lives, healing broken situations, and pointing towards something that was coming. Holy Spirit came and uh, began to empower um, the church body. You know, we need power, church. Uh, We need power in the form of insight and wisdom. 
you know, to, to, to know the heart of God. Uh, we need power to be able to um, ask God to undo situations and strongholds and bondages and such like. And so in this time now where we have this Holy Spirit power and, um, and this, this dynamite. And so in the Old Testament I see God setting things right. In the New Testament I see healing of brokenness. And uh, now in this age I see that God is providing power so that we can keep doing the godly vision, church. And, um, and we need to understand and appreciate these things, that um, we, I don't want to just be a church girl. Is that all right? I want to be a man and I want to be married to a woman and, and I want to raise kids that have godly power to heal broken situations. Amen? And uh, if you open your eyes for just a minute, you'll find a few um, broken situations. And uh, there's all types of issues in our society, and I see them, and, and, and you see them too, if you'll open your eyes and, and have a look. And so this restoring, or this healing, uh, is what I see as part of the vision for our church. We live in a city that's broken down. You know, in the Old Testament, God was setting things right. There were walls broken down in cities, and so God enabled people to fix the walls. Well, today, there are things broken down in the life of our city. And we've got to look out and, and see that God is giving us the power to fix them. Yesterday we spent some time with Peter and Lee and um, just really searching and, and looking for answers and, and looking for direction to help fix a broken situation where people live on the street. Um, which is nothing good is going to come of it, church. Can I say that? If you're excluded from your family and you don't have loving secure people around you who don't have a home, nothing good is going to be born out of your life. You'll get by, but the brokenness will remain. Is that true? And so we've got to look and open our eyes and try and find solutions and godly power um, through faith to fix these things and heal these things and restore these things. There are broken and lost lives all around us. And they take different shapes and forms. And, uh, you know, don't be a person who just comes to church. Can I say that another time? Don't be a person who just comes to church. You're not doing anyone any favours ticking a box saying you came to worship with other Christians. Is it a bad thing? No, it's a brilliant thing. I can't live without it, to be honest. I need to come together. I need to praise God. I need to learn and grow. I need to have my mind opened up. But the point of it all is this church, is that our city needs healing. Don't just come to church uh, week in, week out and feel like that you know, you're know you fulfilling the calling on your life. It's a very small part of what God wants for your life. God wants in a larger part to actually open your eyes. I don't reckon Jesus missed any situation. Do you ever think Jesus walked past something and didn't notice it? You know? Do you think God doesn't notice stuff? It's, a, it's obscene to think that, but we can go around almost blind. Can I say that? I can go around almost blind. If I'm detached from the heart of God, if I'm unaware of my calling to bring healing to the city, I can walk around virtually blind. Now, Jesus found a group of people who were doing just that, and he said, you're all blind guys. He said to the Pharisees, he didn't say you're wrong to the coin, he said, he said, you're blind. Isn't that interesting? Interesting that the religious rulers of the day, he said, you can't see. I'm seeing people with leprosy and you can't see them. I'm seeing people who have been cast out of sight and you can't see them. I'm seeing people. And, and Jesus really probably could identify the differences that he could see what God could see and they couldn't see. And so he referred to them as being blind. And um, church... Brothers and sisters, don't just come here every Sunday without seeing stuff. Even here in our own house here, open your eyes and you'll see stuff. You'll see newly married couples who are going to need help. You'll see people that need your love and care. You'll see stuff. If you open your ears and open your eyes, you'll see that even healing needs to be brought here in the house of God. And so um, I'm about to sort of share some, some uh, thoughts on some words that God has given to us. But I just wanted to set that backdrop. Is that okay? Our mission here on the earth is to 
open our eyes and see um, and believe and be growing in godly power to be able to change broken situations. And uh, mostly I've got to say to you is you need a boldness in your life because if you're going to try and heal a broken situation without speaking about Jesus, without declaring his name, or without praying in the authorities given to you, um, you're probably going about it in your own strength. Is that fair enough? Because ultimately we need people to understand that it's Jesus who is bringing the healing. You know, he is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. When you read the book of Revelation, you see a healed nation, you see a healed group of people under a great king. And that king's not going to be you, it's not going to be me, it's going to be Jesus. And so we may as well start pointing to the truth now, uh, instead of waiting for people to stumble over. Is that okay? And so we need to be bold enough to have a testimony that Jesus has done some restoring in our own life, some healing in our own life. We can share about that and we can offer that to other people. There's been a couple of important words that God spoke to our church and it's taken me some time to try and understand them and put some legs on them. And so if you hear sort of saying, well, it's Vision Sunday, don't just tell us about Jesus, bad luck. Because um, that's not going to happen. But also, specifically, God has said a few things to us. The first word that we got a while ago um, was the word integration. And uh, it's a funny word. It came in a few different ways. Um, Greg, I remember in a, in a meeting we had, it had a vision about a computer defragging. Who's a tech head here? Gary. There's only one tech head in person. Stephen. It's good. And so, um, I don't know too much about this, but I know I'm meant to be defragging my computer all the time. And let me try and explain this to you. When you file stuff and store stuff on your computer, the computer just finds a place to drop it. I think that's the way it is. And, and so it's kind of like a filing cabinet. And, uh, you know, it's just chucking stuff in a filing cabinet. Every now and then, you're supposed to give your computer a break and tell it to defrag everything. And what it does is it takes all the spaces that are sort of left and uh, kind of joins everything together so that all of the files are brought closer together. Am I, is that roughly right, Stephen? He's, he's, he's sort of going, uh, you're about 30% the way there. I, I say it this way. If you ever want to move house, right, the person you need to ring, I'm serious here, if you, need, if you ever want to move house, you need to ring Dale Brown. And um, Brownie just rolled his eyes. He loves it, Dale. Come on, don't even start. And um, I've moved a few people a few times, and Dale's always there. He's a great, great guy, strong and everything else. But the thing I've noticed with Dale is he can pack a container or the back of a truck or a pod, and there's no air left in it. It's like Dale's job, he stands there with these, like a rocking horse. And he turns it upside down, inside out, left to right, and then eventually he's like, he identifies the hole and just goes straight in there. And I'm just like, wow. And uh, I sort of think, oh, well, it's pretty tight, Dale. He's got to repack the whole thing. And um, as much as I'm having a laugh, our church is a bit like that. Our church is a bit like that. We've got a bit of good stuff going on over here, and we've got a bit of good stuff going on over there. And we've got some other stuff going on, but you might not know about it. And, um, and what I see as a church is that we, we lack integration. And, and God wants to, the vision God is giving us. This is God's vision for his house church. This is not me, this is God's vision for his church. Is to bring a lot of these things closer together. To bring understanding to the things. There are things going on in the life of the church that many people don't know about. Can I say something challenging? If you're not in the youth group today, would anybody in the church be able to name the 11 youth group leaders? Anyone want to take a roll at that? If you're not in the youth group today. And, and so the, the point is this though. The point is this. During the course of the week, the youth group is reaching out to high school students reaching out to, to people in the local community, um, running life groups, doing leadership development, celebrating Jesus, preaching the gospel, 
uh, you know, laying hands on the sick, all the stuff that we admire that God's calling us to do. But many people in our church wouldn't understand who it is who's doing it. Is that okay? That's a defrag problem. That just means there's something going on and we don't appreciate it enough. We can't support it because we don't know. We're not prayerful because we don't know. And I could go on and on and on. If I asked someone here in the church who could name all the families in the church with children under five, would anybody be able to have a run at that? Anyone? Feel it's Ferris Bueller's day off. Anyone? Anyone? And so there are, there are all these sections in our church. And some of the newer people to our church have, have alerted me to this. Who are the elders in our church? Um, you know, who looks after this ministry? And so the beginning of the vision God has given us for our church is to begin to tighten up and integrate and help each other appreciate what's going on in different things. Is anyone awake this morning? Yes. This is important, guys. This is lethally important. Um, God is giving us a vision. If we don't appreciate it and understand it and work on it, there's no point to any of this. If we want to do things in our own culture and own way, there's no point. God has clearly been saying to me over the course of 18 months, I need you to bring your church closer together. I need the older generation and the younger generation to work together. I need men and women to work together. I need the youth and I need the worship team to work together. I need the street ministry team to understand the prayer team. I need the prayer team to understand the mission. And, and we need to come into church every week, guys, and still not knowing the person you're sitting next to is not going to get this job done. God has called us to do a great thing in our city, to heal broken lives. And you know what? God is saying that the lives out there are so fractured. Have you ever noticed how fractured people's worlds are? They lose their jobs. They lose their home. They, they lose their rental. You know, they, they, they just keep getting broken out and everything else. And so the church is meant to be the opposite response to that. There's meant to be a closeness. There's meant to be an integration. There's meant to be a knowing of one another. There's meant to be a, a loving atmosphere and a culture of, of closeness. There's not meant to be this, well, I didn't know that was going on, or I don't know who they are, or all the rest of it. There's meant to be an investment in each other's life. And so God has been talking to me, the vision for this church is we need to be better integrated. Why? Why? Because integration and closeness brings healing. It brings unity. It brings power. It brings blessing. The psalmist said this, Psalm 133. He spoke about unity being directly related to God's blessing. Now, I think our church is blessed, but I know we can be a lot more blessed. Do you agree with that? There's some stuff I think, man, I wish the blessing of God would just fall on that. But then, when I read the Word of God, which doesn't lie, it says that the unity is the thing that God gives the blessing to. And uh, so we need to respond and work on that. You've actually got, I preached deliberately last week, press out and press through. You've actually got to decide to stop living in the bubble that you're in. And uh, speaking of bubbles, some of us are just not geared up to open up our heart and open up our home to other people. And um, I just really felt the Lord say to me, we're getting ready to move at the moment, and there was a bubble wrap on the table. And, um, and I felt God say to me very clearly, some people in our church just need to bubble wrap some stuff in their house. Is that right? Do you ever freak out if you've got a really nice house and, uh, and then there's a family you like, maybe they come over, they've got little kids that are a bit wild. Come on, be honest. Where are you at? Who are you? Have you ever felt that? I just feel the Lord say to me, get some bubble wrap. It's that easy, isn't it? Put it up high. Thank you, Tom. Brilliant. We always count on a mathematician to come up with a great answer. Get some bubble wrap and just put that Fabergé egg away for the weekend. Is that a wrong? Can I say it that way? Some people have just got to learn to just let some fences down a little bit. 
And uh, this is just simple advice that I want to give you. But we've got to learn to integrate church. And uh, there's been this, uh, this word about integrating and, and defragging. And I just want groups to relate better to each other. I want you to invest in each other's lives better. We live in a broken world that's very isolated. And if we can't model something different, what's the point? And so I really, um, thank you. I'll keep going. The world is so fractured, and God wants to show the world how he can bring healing by bringing people closer together. And so you've got to be challenged um, and take seriously if you believe it's God speaking to you this morning about just working harder at integrating, and we'll do some stuff. And, and I just want to respond to some of the um, good criticism that people have brought that they don't understand how things work or know who. So we're going to probably lay hands on a few more leaders in front of you all and tell you what they're doing and, and, and so that you can connect your heart and, and your mind with them and, uh, and understand a bit more about who they are. Integration brings unity and it'll bring blessing. blessing. And so uh, if we're going to lead the healing for a fractured world, we've got to start it here. And uh, the other word, uh, the other part to the message of integrating is this, is that we've got to understand how to integrate the, the different gifts and services and ministries that we have into the world. If you haven't noticed, um, if you haven't noticed, nine out of ten people aren't in church this morning. In our city, in our nation, if you haven't noticed. So there's 24 million people. So 2.4 million people are in church this morning. And uh, the other 22 million people aren't in church this morning. Uh, you probably don't notice because you're in church and you just think this is what everybody does. But I encourage you, uh, take one morning off once, Sunday morning. There you go. That's a bold statement. Take one morning off and go and drive around. You'll see that uh, there's a lot of people not in church. And uh, they're, they're at Bunnings. And, uh, and I've got to say to us, as a church, God has been helping me understand that we have to better seek Him and better understand His heart about how to bring the ministry and the blessing and the gifting and the services that we have into our community, to integrate them into the community that we live in. And so let me say to you this way, a worship team would understand quite clearly part of their role is that they want to bring leadership, they want to bring honour to God, they want to bring, uh, you know, unity to the congregation. They want to help the congregation declare. And so that stuff is all understanding how a worship team works where? In church. In church. Everyone say, in church. In church. How does it work outside of church? Has anyone thought about it? How does a worship team serve people outside of church? How does a worship team bring that joy and that thankfulness to people outside of church? We, we only ever understand our ministry inside church a lot of times. Ever thought about it? And I've just been contemplating over the months about different areas of church life, like worship. If you've got a gift to play music and sing, could we bring it somewhere? Could we take it to a place and bring some of that joy? Could we take the worship team into a nursing home, for example, and just be a blessing there and, and, and minister to them? Are there ways to teach music to people? Are there ways to do certain things as a worship team outside of church? Church. God is telling me that we need to learn and see and seek Him about how to integrate things into the life of the community. Because the community is not coming here all the time. Uh, but Jesus said, I have come to seek. I have come to seek and save that which was lost. I have come to seek church. And I believe that we get lazy in, in not seeking the ways in which God... If you're a teacher... There's lots of good teachers in the church. You have the gifting to teach. But in church, we know how it works. We teach Bible. Or we teach stewardship. 
or we teach uh, people how to function in their gifting. But did you know there's people who aren't here this morning in the city who need to be taught how to read, how to write, how to drive, how to cook, how to budget, how to forgive. There are lots of things that broken people who need healing need from a teacher. But teachers are so fixated on teaching Bible or teaching something in the life of the church. And so the word integration is very challenging to me. We've got to be able to see how does my ministry in the worship team as a teacher or whatever it is your gifting is work outside of the church. And, and God is looking and showing and saying, are you blind to a broken city? Are you blind to a sick city? Are you blind to a hurting city? And the answer, I hope, is no, Lord, we're not blind, but we just haven't understood how to take what we have out of the church and into the community. And we really need to honour what God is saying. God is saying, I want you to integrate the things you do so well with one another outside. Our community centre, there's so many things that we can do through our community centre to make it more of a blessing and to bring more healing to those who aren't with us this morning, who aren't in church. Is that okay? Ministries, services, and all these things. And uh, we just got to really be challenged and questioned. Why do we need to do it? Because God wants to use the church to bring healing to the world. Why? Because every soul is worth it. Why? Because God loves those people that are hurting in our streets that we don't see. Why? Because God cares about broken nations. Why? Because we are the hope of the world. And God is saying, if you're going to be the hope of the world, you've got to integrate. We've got to get closer together. You've got to bubble wrap your life a bit, church, and reach out and try and build um, bridges that close these gaps. If we're just going to play around and do church and be fragmented and everybody does their own thing, just forget about it. I feel God saying that to be very strong, just forget about it. We have got to be close together because that's what the world needs right now. They need to see a church that has a closeness and an integration. They need to see also a church that understands how to minister to a community. You've got to think of how does my gifting work not in church but in a hospital? How does my gifting work not in a church service, but how does my gifting work at a community event? How does my gifting work to my neighbour? Integrate. We've got to be thinking, what are the next steps for me to integrate my gift? Is that alright, church? That word integration, defragging, closing up the gap. There's a huge gap between church and the rest of the world. You know, some people come to church and the, and the, the overall, overarching comment that they say is, I didn't understand what anyone was talking about. I think, man, you know you're in trouble then. Is it true? Jesus came along and I believe with that integrated approach, he thought, I'll pick up a seed and I'll talk about it. And they'll all understand it. Every last one of them. And, and we seem to have a language of our own church. And people are like, I don't understand what's going on. And um, Jesus was um, talking about integration. He's the incarnation. Uh, he was like, I'll integrate for you. I'll go down and be birthed out of a human mother. <laughs> come on. <laughs> I'm talking about integration there. God said, I'll come and dwell amongst them. That's how integrated God wants to get. I will feel pain with them. I'll feel distress and sorrow. I'll feel rejection. I'll feel tiredness and sleeplessness. I'll feel stress. I'll actually come down and feel everything that they feel. That's how integrated I want to be. It saddens me that the church doesn't have a heart like that sometimes. It saddens me that I don't have a heart like that sometimes. That I don't want to be completely integrated as God was integrated. Amen? And so, uh, and you know, Jesus' ministry, talk about integrating the community, it didn't even look like it functioned much in the church. You know what I mean? 
he had a bit of a go at it, but um, most of it was out on the streets. He even told his disciples, look, go without any money, so you're not working into anyone, and go to a home and just try and find some hospitality. And if you do find it, then bring the name of Jesus, cast out devils, heal the sick, minister to the lowly, and all that sort of stuff. And so while our society has, has moved on and developed and everything else, those principles have not And uh, we've got to think and, and integrate our thinking even more with the thinking of Jesus. Integration is important to our city because the church is the hope of the world. And it's separated itself somehow from the community, if you haven't noticed. And um, maybe I'll talk about some of those things. The other word that God gave us as an eldership, and that I've just been wrestling with a bit, is the word completion. Everyone say completion. completion. Completion is an important word for us. Because God has given us some um, awesome blessings and tasks that are, and they're not finished yet. And um, I feel myself wrestling over the last few years with with wanting to do new things and seeing new opportunities and wanting to plant another church and all of those things that maybe you've experienced or whatever, but I just feel God constantly saying to me, finish what I gave you first. Finish what I gave you first. And there are things that I believe that haven't been finished yet and, uh, and the church and the world we are engaged with the world needs to see God giving the church great success. Um, it's a funny word, success, and I'll be careful with it this morning, but I just believe that the world needs to see there's a great favour on the church. Can I say it that way? And by completing the things God gave you, completely complete. You know, doing them perfectly, and doing them well, and in a God-honouring way, is going to be a great um, dynamic in the ministry to the people in the world. It's about being faithful as Jesus himself was faithful. And uh, we've got to be faithful to the things God's called us to do and, uh, and obedient to them and walk as God instructs. Jesus said several things about starting and not finishing. I just want to read a little scripture here uh, to you. Uh, this is from Luke 14. And I'm down at about verse 28 or so. For which of you, desiring to build a tower, does not first sit down and count the cost? And uh, I believe in, in life in general, in church life, we're very good at getting inspired. Is that true? We get inspired. God shows us stuff. It's very inspiring. Um, and we get very excited about it. And sometimes we jump into it and begin to do stuff. And um, I just really feel that Sometimes we stop and fail to count the cost. How long is this going to take? How much effort? How many people are going to need to be involved? How much funds going to be, need to be raised? How much prayer is going to need to be put in? And um, if anything like me, I can be a bit lazy. And sometimes I fail to acknowledge that these things I need to be faithful to. I need to keep praying till the job's done. I need to find people to keep praying with me till the job's done. I need to keep speaking. I've dropped off badly sometimes, keep speaking about things. You know, I, I'm, I'm learning now through studying this word God's given us more that I need to speak more about the things that aren't finished. You know, often people just, they're not finished because we just haven't spoken about them enough and haven't spoken towards them. So Jesus said, For which of you, desiring to build a tower, does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid the foundation, and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to mock him, saying, The man began to build and was not able to finish. Or well, what king, going out to encounter another king in war, will not sit down first and deliberate whether he's able with his 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000? And so Jesus spoke about um, this, this completing of tasks. And I think we just live in a society where we sort of roll on from one thing to the next and they're never quite completed. I know I do it. So I'm not accusing you of doing it, but I'm thinking if I do it, I bet other people do it. And, uh, and, and even, you know, God's given you a start to do something and somehow it's found itself on the shelf. 
you didn't finish writing the album that God instructed you to do, or you didn't finish, uh, you know, the praying through a certain situation and it came back. Uh, you know, you didn't finish it off. And so I, I've really been trying to understand this, this completion. And, um, and God is saying to me quite clearly, I'm not going to give you another field to plan out until you finish planting out the one I gave you. Uh, fair enough. And, uh, and also, for my own benefit, it's not like a discipline thing. God says, I want you to reap the harvest. I want you to enjoy harvest time. I want you to pull in the harvest. But how are you going to have that joyful experience of knowing the faithfulness of God if you don't finish planting the field that you have first? And so you might look around the life of our church and our projects and see there are things that aren't completed yet. And uh, I just want to focus on these two areas for just a moment, but I feel are critical to this. This is the way forward for us. The structure and the leadership and development of our church needs to be complete. There needs to be a very clear way for people to hear about Jesus, to respond to Jesus, to give their life to Jesus, to grow in Jesus, to grow up in Jesus, to become mature in Jesus and begin to minister on behalf of Jesus. And there needs to be this, um, this clear uh, leadership program, if I want to call it that, I don't know what I should call it, but, but we need to as a church, as it, this is internal now, I'm not talking about our projects outside the church, you are the greatest project in the church. Did you know that? And God wants to build into you and draw out of you um, some incredible stuff but if you're just going to come to church and hear a few sermons and do a few bits and pieces around it, we really need to honour God with our life and say, God, I need to be built up layer upon layer. I need to be led. I need to be fed. I need to be challenged. I need to grow. I need to walk by faith. I need to suffer some setbacks. I need to get back on the horse and go again. And as a Christian, I've got to learn to not back down from the things God's called me to do. And when we're underdeveloped, of course we back down. Of course we're going to not have what we need to complete the task. But that's my fault. And that's the, the church's fault for not identifying that building proper disciples, robust people. How many of us would sell our home if the Lord told us, I want you to sell your home? And I want you to pack up and, well, I want you to be at that place where you can hear that voice and do what you're told. Can I say it like that? Do what you're told. You know, um, it doesn't have to be a threatening thing. God is a loving father. Just do what I tell you. You know, often we want to ask all this stuff, God, just do what I tell you. And when you do do what he tells you, a year later you think, man, I'm glad I did what he told me. Now I understand. Now I see why God told me to do that. And so I, I really feel that the word completion, we haven't put the right people in the right places to help carry people forward, to invest in their life, to build them up, to put grace on their life, to um, give a hope and a strength. And so we'll be looking towards taking next steps to identifying people that can help build people. And, um, and you can talk about projects, but... But this church is a project, and God wants to build us into a strong house. And so, you know, there are glaring issues in the life of our church. God's saying to me, stop looking at new fields and complete what I gave you to complete. Do you know we don't even have a children's ministry leader in our church at the moment? Someone to oversee and give vision and speak goodness and, and, and hear from the Lord about it. And yet, children are our most obvious and glaring opportunity and responsibility to minister Jesus Christ to. And, you know, as much as I can get excited about planting another church, God is saying to me, you will not plant until you finish what I gave you to do. And so, the, the vision of the word completion is going to take a lot of obedience it's going to take a lot of courage because some of the eldership might be approaching you and, and saying that we believe you are the one that God is going to help lead something through and build something through. 
And you're going to have to leave your bubble of coming and going to church and, and learn how to get consumed with seeking God about how to finish this job off. Um, don't just come to church and plonk yourself down and sit there and endure 30 minutes of me babbling on about whatever and all the rest of it. You've got to be seeking God during the week about the projects and the things that God has given you to do, church. And we want to put the right people in place to help to continue to finish and complete that building of leaders. That's why we, we need it. And our elders and staff and our ministry leaders, we really need to just rise up and, and get this sorted out for our church once and for all. Is that okay to say it like that? Mm. And uh, the structure of our church. You know, why is it important? Because some of us, you haven't had finished building your relationship with God. That's what this is all about, building a relationship with God. And we haven't put the right people in front of you, the right people with you, we haven't got the right people serving you, stirring you up, encouraging you to build your relationship with God. Because once you build your relationship with God, you don't need anything else. Did you know that? Once you build a relationship with God and you understand how to grow it and you understand how to get through the levels. Some of us are struggling to pray right now. Is it true? Some of us are struggling to read the Bible right now. Some of you wouldn't be able to find your Bible right now. And that tells me that that relationship has not been built properly. And so we've got to get down and start again and build from the bottom up and get the job done that we know and are competent as a church. That from when people first have the courage to visit us, right through a period of seasons and years, that they will have a built relationship with God. Where they hear his voice and respond to it, no matter what he asks them to do. Amen? And so it's not about just attending church, but building. Building a relationship. And that's going to be the next steps for us. And in the world, we actually have projects that are unfinished. And um, talk about counting the cost. You know, there are, there are projects that we still need to raise tens of thousands of dollars to finish. And as much as my mind is trying to get on other things, God is saying, you will not. <laughs> What's that movie? You will not pass. <laughs> it's like, you will not dream about something else until you cut the ribbon on some stuff that is unfinished. And um, we got a community centre half built in India. And man, it's a struggle because of the issues over there uh, and everything else. But God is putting in me through his word to complete a determination to see that thing complete. And don't expect me to talk. Don't even approach me, church. Here's a warning. Don't approach me with any projects. Don't approach me with any ideas until we get this centre finished. You know, Adams and Alicia are here with us for a season to be a blessing to us and, and they still haven't got the water connected to the home in the orphanage. The well is done, praise the Lord, but we praised too early. <laughs> Have you ever been to a football game and celebrated too early? <laughs> Last origin, thank you. <laughs> Devastating, wasn't it? Whoa! So it's, and we, we've celebrated too early. They still haven't got the gas connected. They still haven't got the fences built. There are still things that we haven't finished yet. And I am excited and not discouraged about putting those things in front of us and saying, for $1,500 we can get the water connected. Let's do it, church. For $1,500 we can get the gas connected. Let's do it, church. For $2,000 we can get the fences finished. Let's do it, church. And I'm going to be excited to put those images and those pictures and those challenges in front because God wants to complete. And he wants to show the blessing and the success that's on the church because the church is obedient and it's focused. Amen? And I don't want to start any more ministries or any more churches or anything else until we finish what it is that God has given us. Amen? So the vision for our church, you know, the, the why, why are we doing it? What's the why behind the what we are doing? The why is to bring healing, church. Our city needs to be healed. Our own lives need to be healed. Our own lives need to be healed. 
and we need stronger ministry to one another. But we're not going to get that strong ministry unless we're integrated together, unless we eat together, unless we walk together, unless we serve together, unless we worship together, unless we pray together. If we don't defrag, if we don't understand who it is who's reaching young people, who it is who's reaching street people, who it is who's you know doing these different ministries, if we don't know them by name. You know, Blake preached this morning, God knows you by name. He knows your middle name. Blake Terence Reynolds. He knows the hairs on your head. Zero is a number eight. And, and we've just got to get away from this coming and going. Coming and going. We've only got an hour together here this morning, church. Out of 168 hours in a week. Some people here, I'm telling you, you've got to bubble wrap your home and just chill out of it and get some people over. You've got to push out and push through after church, instead of going to see your favourite person, your BFF, the one you love the most, go and meet the one you know the least. It's not comfortable, Anne, but it has to be done. Jesus says this one thing is needful. You know, I believe, I hear the word of Jesus speaking to me right now. This, it is so needful right now to push out of the bubble you live in and push through. Because what we're doing now, the church, the world can replicate easily. If people need to look in and see an integrated community of people that are invested in one another, involved with one another, love one another, serve one another, connect with one another, black, white, male, female, young, old, wherever you come from. How many people in this room know refugees? How many people in this room know homeless people? How many people in this room know, know elderly, infirm people? How many people in this room know people with young children? We've got to begin to break out of the... I'm oh, nearly sore. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> We've got to break out of this stuff that we're trapped in. And God is challenging this church, integrate yourselves. And work out together how to integrate, how to bring your gifting to the, the streets. How to bring your gift into the world. How to bring your gift into the city. And we've got to finish what we start. And the two important things to finish is, one, the building of people. The building of people is so important. The, the supporting of people, the encouraging people, the leading people, the correcting people. The, the speaking of goodness and breaking strongholds over people's life, the building of a human person is so important. It is the important thing. You know, Jesus took his disciples and built them, you know, in a, in a majestic way to the point where eventually they could say, yes, God, no matter what God asks them. And we've got to get there. This is not a game. We've got to get to the yes, God place. And if you're not there yet, Put your hand up and say, I need help. And we've got to finish the things we've started. We've got to finish uh, you know, and put in place leaders to, to lead young people and leaders to lead new Christians and leaders to lead ministry, leaders to lead the church out of the church and into the world. And we need to get all of those right people put in place to complete that work. And we need to complete the projects and the jobs that God has given us to do. Amen? I hope you're blessed this morning. I didn't want to give you a razzle-dazzle vision Sunday about this or that and the other. I really wanted to honour God and say these are the two things God is saying to us. Heal the city through integrating yourself. Heal the city through completing that which I gave you to do. And I want to be a part of a church and I want to be able to stand before God at the end of my life and say, Lord, you told me expressly that I was here to heal the city and that I honoured that word and worked towards that word and I want you also to seek God and say, were these words of God? Is integrating and completing the word of the Lord to this church? And if you believe it is, pick it up and run with us and, and it's through the unity of the saints that we're going to get blessed.
Amen? Amen. It's through the unity. Why don't we stand together, speaking in unity? And um, the best thing I can probably say this morning is, would you just allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you for a, just a, a little period of time now? And um, if you're a bit emotional here and a bit pumped up, well, that's great. But the point is, you've got to get your car and drive out of here. And, um, and so I'm going to be reminding us uh, about what does integration look like? What are the next steps? What does it mean? And what does completion look like for us? What are the next steps and what does it mean? And I want you to just prepare your heart to be able to join together. We can do something powerful if we do it together. Amen? And uh, I really want to try and create this togetherness around the promises of God and the words of God.